to introduce uh, Sean Kiernan. Sean Kiernan is the founder and CEO of Green Gage, a digital digital merchant banking pioneer. He has extensive experience in the financial services industry and has also worked in various executive management positions. He founded Green Gage uh, after working uh, with the first bank in the world to offer uh, crypto products to clients, uh, Falcon Private Bank, uh, where he served as CEO and interim CEO in the London operation until establishing Green Gage. I'm going to allow Sean to tell you a little bit more. Uh, I'd be very privileged to uh, go to London and meet with Sean and the Green Gage team, and they're absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much for making the journey, Sean. Um, first off, a huge thank you to Stephen for hosting us. I think this is um, a, oh, so sorry. Uh, an amazing event to have. Uh, really excited to be in Glasgow. I think there's a lot happening up here in Scotland. Uh, so it's, it's fantastic for us to kind of uh, engage with the wider community. Um, just by way of introduction, I, I am a banker. Um, so I, I have to own that. But uh, I'm definitely part of the next wave of what I think banking will become. Um, and this is what I call digital merchant banking. But I think there's a broader trend around Web3. Uh, I had, to, to follow in great footsteps around the, the way that advisory work is, is changing and moving as we're evolving. And I think the, the definitions that we've just heard are, are illuminating. Um, if we think about the, the idea of a bank being historically a tied agent, so you'd go to your high street bank and they'd give you everything under one roof, this is changing and it should change because it's not always in the best interest of the consumer just to get that one option. And the whole idea of Web3 for me is about choice and it's putting the client first and giving them access to things that they can choose them themselves. Um, we hear this big innovation in crypto, digital assets. For me, the, the bit that really interests me, I, I mean, I love crypto, I've I'm, I'm kind of been doing it for a few years now, is, is the plumbing. And I think the, the solutions that we're starting to find um, with sending money cross-border real time, uh, where you can't do that in the traditional rails, but you can do this in the new world, about structuring debt products for small businesses, where you can open up access to, to funding for clients in, in a way that they've never seen before, and that banks aren't really doing today. Um, and a whole host of things. It, it's these kind of u real use cases that, for me, are, are what gets me out of bed and, and is why I set up Green Cage. Um, I'll just give a few words, because Christian asked that I kind of explain why, why I set up the company. Um, and I think we, we are a use a case or example of how a Web3 company can, can be set up. Uh, we're now 35 staff. We are based in London, but we're staff around the UK. Um, and we're growing in terms of clients. So what we offer is, on one level, very simple. Uh, it's a current account uh, with GBP and Euro. It's kind of like a Revolut-style thing. But on another level, it's very different um, in that uh, we are friendly to crypto, so we work with companies and individuals in this space. We understand the source of wealth because we've invested millions in the tech. Um, and the other thing we do is uh, lending. So we work with partners. We don't just work with our own balance sheet because we don't have a big balance sheet. We can't. Um, but we open up access to funding across traditional and digital sources of money. So I'm ambivalent. As long as it's clean and we can facilitate something that the client wants, uh, we can get them access to funding through credit funds or family offices, the, the TradFi or traditional world, but we can also open them up to the digitally native world. And this is where I think the in, in real innovation is happening. Um, uh, I set up Green Gage in 2018. Um, historically, I've, I've been a banker within Credit Suisse, and I set up a, a bank within Credit Suisse in 2010. I moved from uh, Switzerland to do that. Uh, and then uh, I ended up getting acquired from that office into an Abu Dhabi Southern Wealth Fund, which is now called Mubadala. Um, and that office uh, of the London bank, this Falcon Private Bank, uh, was the first bank in the world to do crypto products. So back in 2017, we worked with Bitcoin Suisse, which is a Swiss-based, in Zug, actually, um, uh, trading house. And they were allowing us to, to offer custody and trading in Bitcoin and fiat and cross for our clients. And I, I was just fascinated by that. We, we saw that um, uh, there's a whole world that had emerged since Bitcoin launched. Um, and now we have all these other cryptocurrencies and innovation. Um, but these were actors that weren't integrating into the banking system. And they didn't understand each other. They were speaking different languages. And that, that ability to bridge these two worlds is for me that, that real world of what an advisor offers. Um, and you have to get your heads around both worlds intensively to do that. Um, there are 
unique risks in crypto from a banker's perspective. I think the biggest is money laundering. If you don't know what you're doing, you can facilitate transactions that uh, could get you into jail. So you have to invest in coin forensics or what we call blockchain analytics to trace these sources of funding. But the other bit is fraud. And we hear increasingly banks are debanking people or also removing access to accounts for people that want to purchase crypto or back and forth. And a lot of the reasons, not just the money laundering piece that prevents firms from or banks to, to offer this, is, is that uh, banks are afraid that if they facilitate a transaction and a client loses money, they're going to be on the hook if that client says that I'm going to sue you for those funds that are lost. So increasingly, the HSBCs of the world are putting caps. I think it's 10K a month that you can actually send money out to a crypto exchange to do this. I, I'm not a libertarian as such, but I think it's, it's not a great look if, if a bank prevents freedom for clients and actually removes access for a client to, to, to do what they want to do. And so what, what really drove me to set up GreenGage was frustration with traditional banking. Um, I, I found that uh, there are a lot of people doing interesting things, but if you're slightly an outlier, and crypto is by definition an outlier, um, banking just doesn't respond to this. It's, it's very machinic these days. Um, and so what, what I'm trying to do here is, and Steve is with us today, one of our relationship managers, is combine this idea of the fintech revolution in crypto with the old school idea of people. So if you can talk to someone, if you can actually understand and have that relationship, uh, you can build something that uh, allows somebody to get through that tick box approach and move, move around that. Um, uh, so what, what I'm gonna do now is just go through a little bit of how Web3 banking actually works, but uh, bear with me. And I call this digital merchant banking. Uh, so the first bit, and forgive the repetition of what Web3 is, um, uh, just slightly graphically, I, I, I think the, the bit around Web3 for me is, as I mentioned, how do we act as a gateway, but in, 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 the, in the sense of being um, almost a Sherpa, where as an advisor you can work with the client to access whatever they want, um, but the client's at the center of what you do. So I'm not pitching, I'm listening. It's a very different dynamic. And for me, that's, that's something much more powerful uh, because I, I'm here to make money, obviously it's a business, but um, in listening to the pain points of a client and trying to figure out what uh, prevents them from doing what they're doing, I actually then, if I can solve those, earn my keep. So I'm not having to, to sell um, product. I'm rather trying to do the opposite of that. I'm trying to discover alongside the client and sit on their side of the table. So the relationship is, for me, more interesting because it's one that I'm collaborating with the client. I'm not trying to, um, to kind of take them down the garden path and, and make some money from them in that, in that sense. Um, the dynamics for us commercially, though, are different in that respect. Um, a lot of people uh, think banking is free, but it's, it's really not free because <laughs> when you're opening an account with a bank, um, they are taking your money, those deposits, and they're taking a net interest margin against that by lending those onwards. Um, and that is then uh, quite lucrative, particularly these days with high interest rates. Uh, whereas with us, we just charge an account fee, and that's it. And you can do, have as much on the account or as little um, but it's, it's paying for that relationship. And I think um, we, we often say you wouldn't nickel and dime your accountant or your solicitor. Um, you shouldn't nickel and dime your banker because you end up getting what you pay for. Um, and in our case, uh, that relationship, once you've paid our fee, which for an individual is quite low, it's seven fifty a year. So it's not for retail, but it's for somebody that is probably slightly um, uh, more mass affluent or high net worth. Um, you, you then have somebody that you can call and talk to and that opens up a whole set of things that we can then provide for you. Uh, for corporates, we're a little bit higher. Um, 5K a year for, for a crypto company because it, it takes us some time to do onboarding and work uh, to assess a business. Um, we've heard about open banking a lot and open banking is that process of making payments in the, in the traditional world peer-to-peer -peer almost. So we, we can get a lot of efficiencies by by tackling the visas and MasterCards and the rents that these providers kind of extract from, from any payment. We're, we're typically paying one to 2% almost of all transactions uh, to, to middlemen in this. Um, the, the, the next step beyond open banking is what's known as open finance. And this is that same mechanism of trying to take away the, the, the steps that, that Jess was talking about, these little hops along the way that a lot of middlemen are taking and extracting that rent that is being taken from third parties and giving that back to the consumer. 
So um, we have to be able to navigate these things and make sure they're done well. But for me, lending is the next big market that we need to open up and, and give back money to, to. For us, we're focusing on SMEs or small businesses. Um, so the first bit is uh, you're in the crypto world, I and mean, we're all here kind of out of curiosity, or maybe you're actually in the business. To actually get a bank account is almost impossible. It's an issue that's been raised in Parliament quite a few times. Um, and th these two reasons, the AML piece, uh, just concerns around money laundering and, and then fraud are the two, I think, main drivers for why that's difficult. But there's a whole new generation of firms, and Green Gage is not alone in this, where we can innovate and use these technologies actually to make it safer to bank. And what I mean by that is we do all the traditional checks. So we have AI-based tools in the background to make sure our clients are clean. Um, but we can also use these new technologies to trace. Um, whenever you make a payment, for example, you're checking just the last hop in the traditional world. So you see where the, the sending bank comes from. But for us in the digital world, you can see that whole life cycle, not just of the particular instrument that you're touching or the particular counterparty, but every other person that they've touched, which on one level is a bit creepy <laughs> if you think about it. Um, but uh, if you do it well, and I think there's technologies like zero knowledge proofs that allow us to navigate these waters, um, still with protecting some form of privacy, uh, you can really understand who a client is and layer that on top of the traditional mechanisms. So if you do invest in the tech and, and the teams, um, and we have, I think, a Green Gage as an example. So our head of compliance was uh, the lady who set up uh, Binance in France as their head of compliance. So I thought if she could do that, she can definitely do it for us. Um, uh, Lynn McConnell. Uh, if, if you have people that get these technologies and how they work and the inherent risks, um, this isn't, it's not rocket science, it's just an additional way of approaching uh, finance. Uh, so our, our two markets we're really looking at are actually very different but slightly similar. Uh, so Web3 firms or crypto firms, but more broadly SMEs and what I would call the outliers. So firms that are, for example, with an international director, a charity, a trust structure, something that isn't tick box. As soon as you deviate from the script that we see a lot of the, what I could call the web two banks kind of doing, um, you can't get an account open. And what we're trying to say is actually these are the more interesting clients and they're the ones that for us are doing stuff. They're the innovators, entrepreneurs. If you're slightly unusual, there's a reason for that. And so we want to bring them into the system and give them an opportunity to, to get an account and to get, get the services that we're, what we're offering. Um, some of the pain points I think we all know, um, it takes forever to open up a bank account. Um, so we're trying to make that as short as possible with, with technology. We aim for, it's, it's not overnight, I'm not a revolute, I can't pretend to be, but we're aiming to do it within a month if we can. Um, there's only 0.26% of banks that will even touch crypto, and they're mostly Swiss banks in Europe. Um, I don't think there's any in the UK that are, are, are in terms of banks, and here I make a distinction between e-money firms and banks. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Revolut is probably the most famous e-money firm in the UK, so it kind of sniffs like a bank, and it, you get an account number, but the client monies do not sit on the balance sheet of the e-money firm. They sit in a separate custodian, so they're actually ring-fenced. If the firm goes bust, those funds are safe. Um, but you're not getting any yield or interest because of that absence of a net interest margin activity. Um, so uh, there are e-money firms that are in the space and we're, we're one of the distributors of that. And then the fees uh, for those firms that have gone in as the first wave um, are typically exorbitant. So I, I said 5K a year, and that is material fee, but it's, it's not the, the crazy fees that some of the earlier suppliers were, were charging. Um, some look at 100K a year just for a basic account. Um, so the three things we offer, and this is kind of the pitch now, um, is <laughs> relationship-based service, um, a basic current account which behaves like an app on a website, like a Revolut-style thing, but I, I joke this is kind of a Coots Revolut hybrid, so there's a person with the app that you can call. Um, and then generally support, and this is the Web3 piece, so uh, we can't be a master of everything, um, so we work with partners and we maintain uh, what I call a credit library of partners across traditional and digital. So if our clients need something, our job is to facilitate that introduction. And we, we take a fee, perhaps, for that introduction, but we're not then selling our own products exclusively. And in a way, it's kind of like broking, but 
using these new digital technologies as a means to enhance what traditional brokers do. We've done now several hundred million of volume of lending um, using weird and wonderful bits of collateral. So you can use crypto as collateral, um, why not? And release money into the fiat ecosystem for that. And we can open up access through partner balance sheets to these kinds of products. Um, my, my dream has always been to turn this into an SME investment bank, getting digital debt products like uh, commercial paper or fixed income, structuring them on a, a blockchain-based backend. And GreenGage can be an originator of this type of product and then issue that out into the capital markets. So I'm very interested in the likes of Infinitex and the work that's being done to, to look at digitization of uh, the capital markets and the rails that need to be built. And then we can just be an actor to, to bring that, that fruit um, to, to fruition. Um, one, one of the big fans, or I'm a big fan of him, um, is one of the earliest merchant bankers, who's a guy called Sigmund Morberg. Um, he set out principles of how you actually run a bank. And I think banking has lost its way to a large extent. Um, the, the first one he listed was moral standing, which I think is, is really interesting. <laughs> um, um, and uh, for me, that's about longevity. So if, if you are known in an ecosystem to be a good actor, uh, people come back to you. So you're, so you're not taking that extraction of value from a one-off relationship, which we've seen in a lot of the, the crises in banking. You're building long-term relationships. And I think from our perspective in Web3 banking, um, the only two bits that are defensible for us are relationships and data. I think beyond that, if we can't protect the clients and preserve that, that honor, everything else is kind of secondary. So um, these are things we're just trying to build. And I was asked by Kirsten to talk about the people we would look to hire or to grow and kind of, um, uh, I think thought leadership is another one up here that uh, we're big on, but uh, university degrees are amazing and um, experience is great. But for me, it's more about curiosity and ethos. So I, I asked Steve when he joined, like, what was the last book you read? <laughs> and he, it's, it's more about these kind of things, like if you have an inquisitive mind and you're, and you're open to that's for me the biggest sell. So um, we're, we're just keen to get good people. And the last bit, um, so I, maybe we're on to something, maybe we're not, but uh, we are the top Google search hit worldwide for digital merchant banking. I think we're the only search hit <laughs> for that. Um, so I'm hoping we go somewhere. Um, but uh, one thing I just did want to give a shout out to is one of the thought leadership pieces we have done is a digital parliamentarians research. So Lisa's featured in this. Um, not yet at the top, but I'm sure she will be up um, in our next report uh, next year. Uh, Lord Holmes is kind of the perennial um, star. Uh, he, he's always talking about innovation. Um, but there's definitely something in the water in Scotland, um, not just as uh, uh, Lisa, the chair of the APPG Crypto, but um, we also had the APPG blockchain, which was chaired by Martin Docker to use, so another Scottish MP. And I think th there is something that was part of the reason I wanted to come here. There's, there's something happening here, so we're, we're curious to see where that goes. Um, and thank you. <laughs>